Here I am climbing up the stairs and climbing up the mountain. Look at this, I have arrived at the bighorn sheep. The bighorn sheep, also known as mountain sheep, and I'm here at Burgessu. Uh, I've arrived at this amazing environment. It's an uh, eco display. And look at the ladies there in the back, and there's a male too. Look at those horns. So I'm uh, very proud to present uh, the fourth animals in a series of eight animals that I'm going to draw here at the zoo. And in the zoo here, I will, uh, well, get some impressions of how they, uh, how, the pe um, how the animals live, uh, what is the climate, is it warm, is it hot, um, is it sunny. I'm at the desert. <coughs> the desert is one of the eco displays. And when you walk about, when you walk around this, uh, mountain that they've created. You can really get a very very nice close look at these animals. So you get to see the whole space, the surrounding space that they live in uh, and I can see the big horns of the male, uh, the male bighorn sheep. They are uh, really huge, you can see them here. Compared with the lady mountain sheep they have uh, much tinier horns and they are more like pointy while the male have those nice curved horns. And you can see the eco display here and my little easel that I've set up. And um, well, what struck me first is that these animals are looking at me all the way and uh, they have not had much public of course of the corona time. So they are very curious, uh, watching what I'm doing, and that's what I want to grasp once I'm back at the atelier. And I'm also going to draw in the surrounding, of course. And look at that, it's a big, huge, marvelous looking surrounding. And let's see what this will bring us once I'm back at the atelier. So let's head home. So here we're back at the uh, studio and uh, here you can see the little ladies and uh, this is exactly as I saw it. I'm going to draw in the sky in, instead of uh, the rooftop of course of Burger Zoo. But they have built an, an excellent environment for these uh, bighorn sheep. And let's just start uh, sketching. And of course, I'm seeing here that amazing uh, skyline of rocks. And behind those rocks, I can just imagine uh, the free sky. And, um, well, it's, it's very nice to see how these rock formations uh, slowly come towards us. And it's, uh, well... I'm thinking of, of drawing the male bighorn sheep uh, really in front. So that is not uh, what I actually saw, but as an artist you can put your sheep anywhere you want, of course. So, um, well, let's have a look at that male, uh, well, specimen. I'm going to draw two little helper lines again over my reference picture. And uh, thank you, Burger Sue, for uh, sending me the reference picture so I can make an actual a very close study of these amazing uh, animals. <coughs> and as you can see here, uh, the head part is on the right top uh, space, while uh, the the back of the ship of this sheep is on the left side corner and then the front legs are on the right lower part and the back legs, the hind legs, are uh, on the left uh, bottom corner. 
So these little helper lines uh, will actually help a lot for uh, getting that uh, amazing animal correctly placed. And as I'm drawing its legs, uh, they kind of remind me of the legs of horses, the way they are built. And the knees are a little bit bent forward more than with the horses. And I can also see the loose, uh, well, the boulders or the rocks that have uh, come loose. And I will place them also here in the front to give uh, that sheep a, a nice area to stand on. And then I simply uh, start uh, to search for the shadowy parts. And uh, for this male uh, in the front, I can use a lot of uh, contrast, of course. And in the background, I want to show two female bighorn sheep. And they are far away. And, uh, well, it, it was so funny because uh, it, this was... Uh, I was I was visiting this zoo during uh, Corona time, so they hadn't seen much visitors for a, for quite a while, and when I started sketching there, uh, they were uh, very <laughs> they were very curious of what I was doing there. So they were all watching me while I was drawing and uh, sketching and uh, that was very funny. So I really, really want to get uh, at least two ladies there in the background. Um, just to uh, not any more uh, that would uh, divert the attention from uh, the male uh, specimen, of course, but uh, they have to be there. And what you can also see is uh, that the ladies have more tiny horns while uh, the male have those big rounded horns. And when I'm happy with my first setup sketch, I simply push in the pigments into the paper. I'm using the Stratmore charcoal paper here and it's of light gray color. And the reason why I'm doing that is that I want to prevent the pigments of the charcoal to blend together with the pigments of the pastel pencils. Uh, the, the pigments I draw in, I, well, I drive them into the paper with the little pompostel knife. And I do not want the sky to be all uh, blue. I want uh, to make a little bit of, uh, well, some cloudy effects, some swirls of, of uh, clouds. I want to make the sky to be like um, the sun is just, just coming up and, uh, well, not all blue. And if you want to create a sky, then it's a very uh, simple it's a very simple tip. Just place in a little bit of yellow and, for instance, a little bit of pink. And then you just blur that into your sky area. And that appears like the sun is just coming up from the horizon, just behind the rocks there. Or maybe the sun is settling. It doesn't matter much, but... Um, well, it gives a little bit more sparkle to the sky. And I do that uh, on purpose because the rest of my surroundings consists of pure all kinds of gray. So you can see me uh, coloring in. Now over my initial um, charcoal setup sketch. And I'm simply using the, the light gray and the mid gray and a little bit of the darker gray. So, uh, well, it's a very grayish area and the rocks and boulders are all grayish. So I want to, well, express that in the way that the colors appear to me. 
Now, uh, the background is far away, then this is the mid area. And in the mid area of rocks and boulders, there is a little bit more light. And I can also see a little bit of colors in the rocks. And for the colors in the rocks and to give the gray that warm experience, I'm using a, a very uh, fade kind of pink. And, um, well, for, for all the shadows, I just... Well, kind of imagine them. I'm not exactly copying my reference picture. It's just to get an uh, idea of uh, rocks moving towards us that I want to express. Now here on the bottom of the mid area, there are some uh, more tiny uh, loose rocks that have uh, fallen down a little bit so this brings uh, a little bit more of playfulness into the drawing otherwise it would be all well well a bit uh, a bit more boring to watch so i make use of those uh, tiny little uh, broken off pieces to uh, get that idea of uh, a stony area and here in the front I'm also uh, drawing in some loose rock there and that male uh, bighorn sheep is standing there just in front of us and he's just looking over its shoulder while the ladies in the back are uh, well watching us really really sharp and well the mill does that too but he is then looking over its shoulder and for the tiny detail i'm using a very dark a little bit more coolish gray bluish cool gray and i simply uh, draw in tiny lines there to uh, well Get a little bit of movement into that uh, landscape of rocks. And uh, when I draw, I kind of draw from uh, the top to the bottom. And I do that with a reason, because then uh, you actually do not uh, touch your drawing that much with the hand. So that keeps your drawing intact. And here I'm applying the darkest shadows on the male here in front. And because that, uh, that bighorn male is uh, well, closest to the viewer, I can put in a lot more detail. And you can actually see uh, the markings on its body. So I'm simply drawing in first the darkest shadows that uh, fall upon uh, its uh, right shoulder and upon the legs, of course. And underneath the belly, there is a lot of shadow. And you can see the hooves. And well, you can see uh, a little bit of shadow underneath. It's not on the reference picture but in this case I'm drawing a little bit of shadow uh, to make the whole complete. I want to make them appear like they are uh, well in the wild as you think as you uh, could imagine as good as I can and well I can bring a lot more liveliness to our models if you want uh, because I was actually there and I was actually uh, able to observe the, these animals. And uh, well, they appear quite kind to me, but I don't think <laughs> you uh, want to make them angry because they can really hit you with those horns. So uh, beware. And the horns, of course, are uh, of my main interest. 
I want the attention to go towards those horns. And uh, well, it's just like the rhino. The rhino has a big horn too, so you really want to get that in the picture as uh, your main, um, well, part of interest. And I can see that there's a lot of uh, the color ochre in uh, in the in the fur itself, but also in the horns. So I'm just applying a little bit of that yellow ochre, and I can also see uh, a little bit of that pinkish gray. So I've put that in too, and uh, well, it's. Uh, here are his it's his nuts <laughs> dangling from his body, and uh, I thought it was a nice detail to draw those in. But um, well, of course, the male have those big horns, while the females they have uh, the tiny horns. They're kind of like antenna on top of the head, while uh, the male. The male have uh, those 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 rounded horns that move backwards and then forwards again. They are amazing to see. And what I've heard is that they are hollow inside. So the, the horns are hollow inside. And uh, well, a grown a grown uh, bighorn male can weigh up to. Uh, 120 kilograms so I was quite amazed to hear that and uh, when I was watching them uh, in the zoo I could I could just imagine them uh, weighing that much well here in front a little bit more extra shadow and then my drawing is finished so I hope you will give this a try and should you want to watch the whole process and see the reference pictures also, want to print them out, then you can find those of course on my Patreon page uh, should you be interested. So thank you for watching and um, I will see you again in the next tutorial.